I got happy mail. Okay, today is September the 16th of 2024. Welcome to the She Shed. My name is Jill. You have come upon Fiber Floozy Crafts and I am the Fiber Floozy. Hi. <laughs> It is about four o'clock in the afternoon. I have been gone all day, so I am tired. I am going to get my club soda in my cup. Got my emotional support cup. I craft so I don't kill people. We're gonna crank it open. It is full of ice and ready to go. I have been drinking um, I had some coffee. I had Starbucks and Chick. You know, when I go to Abilene to go to the doctor, I get my Starbucks and my Chick. Chick-fil-A. But I was good today. Today I had a Chick salad. So, that has chicken nuggets and a whole bunch of veggies and stuff in it. So, I was good today. Oh, I love my club soda. Some people are like, how do you do that straight? Because it's nice, it's cold, it's like having a soda, but I'm not being as bad because it doesn't have any sugar in it. so good all right I'm gonna get my scissors this is coming to me from Shannon at art junkie I I won this oh I got another card I won this on her on her channel <gasps> I got one of her precious Precious stickers. Look at this. Our junkie studio. Oh, I love it. It's going to go up here on my wall. No. Oh. Look at that. That's beautiful. These are handmade by her. This is her logo. I love that. Congrats, Jill. All my love, Shannon, AKA Art Junkie. Oh, I love it. I have another card. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's see what I won. I won a book. Oh my gosh. Okay, Shannon, you may not know this. You may not know this, but I have some of these books and I do not have this one. I have a small collection over there that I got from, I did not realize this when you were showing what I won. Oh my gosh. That's kind of exciting. Hold on, you guys. Ah, I'm in my lounge chair. <laughs> Gotta turn my fan on because I just really just came in. Oh. So I have some of these. These are a spiral bound. And I have two or three of them. And I'd had more than one copy of them that I got from Bonnie. If anybody remembers, Bonnie was one of my customers. I used to go to her house and I used to cut her hair and I used to fix her, do her pedicures for her because she was disabled. So she was not able to come to the shop. And she did do it on occasion because she wanted to get out of the house. 
she knew how much pain she would be in if she did and she would do it anyway because she enjoyed the experience of coming to the beauty shop and then she would just suffer for days afterwards but she did it on her own accord she was like no i need i need that i need to get that out of the house thing and i got a bunch of them crochet bags she had a a big bag of supplies and things i got my yarn winder from her the knit picks yarn winder i got a whole bunch of yarn from her that I'm, i've been hoarding it and this goes along with the books that were in in her stuff look at that one that one the crossbody that's very cool This, this particular book is part of a series of learning. So it has absolutely wonderful pictures. Um, these are very easy to understand. The words are easy, they keep it simple, they keep the pictures easy. What they say that's happening in the words is definitely happening in the pictures. And that's unique to, to um, to these books for sure. I am in the midst of an extremely bad fibromyalgia flare. And I it was all I could do to go to my doctor's appointment in Abilene today. All I could do. I got up, I got my coffee, and I did not let myself sit because I would I would have called and said I'm not coming. If I had sat for very long, I would have said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not doing it. So I didn't do that. I got my coffee and I, before my coffee was even done, I was getting up and getting dressed to go because I would have skipped it today. She, um, she ordered some steroids and I've already taken, I've already been to the pharmacy and I already took three of them um, to take take six today, five tomorrow, four the next day, three, two, and then one. And this book also has finishing techniques in it. So it's not just the stitches, it's also how to finish it. This is amazing. This is an amazing learning book, it really is. And here's the patterns. Oh, it's the folded bag. Oh, look, it's the folded bag. I have pictures on, on my phone from Instagram and I screenshotted how to fold that. Now I have the book. It's a hobo purse. They use chain, cluster, double, single, and slip. It's very cool. This one is an amulet pouch, which is fun. Also kind of a hobo thing, right? <laughs> you could also use this to put dice in. This could be a dice bag as well for, for gaming. chain, half double, magic circle, and single. This one is the mini bag. So this one could be used for anything like your phone. It could be used for toiletries, um, feminine pads, just all kinds of things. It's a mini bag. This one is a, a small crossbody. If you have not gone over to see Shannon at Art Junkie, please go in and hook, hook up with her. I like people who know how to do lots of different things on, and then they show that on their channel. So she does 
art, she does crochet. Um, her channel is about giving, very much about giving, and that's, I like to do that myself. This one, they call this one the, cra the Granny Crossover. They call it the Granny Messenger. I called it a crossover, but it's, they call it a messenger. This one is a chunky tote. Now, I like doing the handles this way. Once you finish putting it all together, then you come back around and you, and you do your handles. I like doing that on a bag. This one is a yoga mat bag. Here's a backpack. This one tells you how to make a backpack. This I could see making scrap ones out of out of this pattern. Are you on the horn, Bubby? You still so happy mommy's home? <laughs> he was so glad to see me because I've been gone all day. And Duke's in now. He's pretty happy because he can get some air conditioning. This one is a market bag. I like that. These, this is a really great book. I am so happy to be able to add this to my collection. Y'all know I'm a collector. That's awesome. Okay, so what else happened today? So she gave me some steroids and she looked at my blood work and there was nothing very alarming in, in what she saw. The, the blood work that I got done through the rheumatologist, she, my doctor was a little bit behind because she is not in the system that the rheumatologist is in. The, the system in Abilene is all one system. It's called Hendrick Medical and and she sits outside of it, which I'm actually okay with because to be honest with you, she doesn't have to do things based on the system. She can work kind of outside of it and send me to the system to get things done. And the system is who I have my, who is paying for getting stuff done. So, it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned because her, her opinion is not based on, on that. It's based on um, her own of, uh, independent opinion, if you know what I'm trying to say. I have this tote. It's not very big. It's, if it's teal, it's teal. This is a 10 gallon, 20 by 14 by 13. And what I started to do, when I tell y'all that I've been putting my stuff in a tote, I wanted to show you what was in here because I have not put very much in here yet, but this is the tote that I'm gonna be putting things for when I go to do um, markets. If I, if I wind up not doing market, this will be the things that are donated. I also have some things in here, some washcloths in here, and I believe that I'm going to take them and they're gonna go to the nurses and stuff at the doctor's office next time I go. But what's in here is those blankets that I finished. So here's the first one that I finished. This is that moss stitch blanket. Yellow on both sides. And I did the three colors in the loops and threads carousel twist. I know I've shown you this before, but I, I, there's a reason I'm sh telling you. And I did the lemon cello, which is this one, yet this lemon color. And then the blue is a is scuba. No, it's tide pool. And then the white is called birthday cake. And I just went back and forth 
and in between I did the birthday cake. So I used two of the white, one of the yellow, and one of the green to make the blanket. But I had bought two of the blue, uh, two of the green, two of the yellow, three of the white. So I was able to make, including the, the uh, fringe, that blanket and here is the finished granny blanket. With the shell on the outside. Now, when I was talking to y'all about this, I was gonna do three and three, and three. I didn't have enough to do that. I just didn't have enough. Would not have made it all the way around. And I only did one row of the shell stitch. Now, yes, it's a granny square. I know. But it's the first, it's the first pattern in this book, the baby beginner baby blanket. Hmm. Easy beginner baby blankets to crochet. And for those of you that were like telling me without being able, me being able to hear you. The thing I was talking about that holds my books is a magazine rack. That's the word I was searching for. It's in my magazine rack. Now I've already pulled, so I was able to get these two, these two blankets. From two green, two yellow, and three of the white. And I have just small little balls of it left. That's all I have left. And that's what's in here. Now, the next blanket is the Easy Beginner Fan Stitch Baby Blanket. It's the Fan Stitch Blanket. I have already pulled the yarn for it and I have it set aside, but I'm not gonna start it yet. Not yet. So this is in my magazine rack back there. What else is in this tote, you ask? I don't have a whole lot in here. Because I tend to give these washcloths away. This is the one we made on Friday night with um, Red Heart Smoothie. And then I got two out of these yarns. The Grandma's Knit Washcloth. I do have a tutorial for this here. It is probably my most popular tutorial. And so what I did was I did these two colors together. And then here I did them together, but I did them in sections. So I got two out of that. So those three are in there. The baby blankets are in there. And then my 52 pickup mouth is in here also. This is the 52 pickup mouth. and it made a wonderful wrap. And I washed it and it's ready to go and in here. So that's what's in my tote so far. And I will just keep adding to it. And then I will decide whether I'm gonna do the farmer's market or whether I'm going to donate or if, the, if, I, if I, I also might use them for um, gifts, you know, like I said. So that's where the makes are going. That's the tote they're going in. Oh. Okay. I think that's all I've got for you guys today. My hands are so swollen. 
that I really have not been able to do a whole lot. Waiting for getting to go see the endocrinologist. That is on the 19th. Um, doctor, I call her Dr. Amy. She, she was pleased that I was using the symptom checker in my book that I take to the doctors. She was very happy to see that I had that all. She said that's one thing that she tells her patients is, is to keep track of your symptoms and that way we can kind of, well, this happens when this happens or that happens when I eat this or, you know, any of those kind of things. If you kind of can keep track of that, it helps to sort out what may be causing some of the issues. So she was really tickled to see that I had that. And so I got that set up. I've got September and October glued into my book and ready to go for that. What else? I'd like to know because I've been listening to the fibromyalgia podcast. Now I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia in 1991. So I have been doing my best with fibromyalgia for 30 years. And it comes and it goes. Sometimes it's bad and I just know it's a fibro flare. And sometimes it's something that I hardly notice because I'm doing okay or I have decided I'm not going to think about it. And I know that, you know, all of what's going on with me is not fibromyalgia. We'll, we'll find out. But the, the gal that runs the Fibromyalgia podcast, she has a website, everything. I'll, I'll leave you all some information soon. I'm not going to do it all today, but I will be leaving information about it. But just out of curiosity, how many of you that are watching this right now have fibromyalgia? Just very curious to know. Because according to her research, it's 1 in 13 women. And I believe it was 1 in 20 men that have fibromyalgia. So just curious, just leave me a comment and let me know if you are. If you are a fibro warrior. <laughs> okay, you guys, I think that's it. Uh, if I think of something else, I'll let you know. I almost got run over again today. What is it with me getting run over? I was going down to, um, well, there's a town called Anson in between here and, and Abilene. And there's two lanes and one of them has arrows telling you you're going to have to get over. And I was in the arrow lane and there was a car behind me that was like, they're gonna get ahead of me before I come over. Well, there wasn't room for them to get ahead of me before I had to merge. And they were right, square right there from my bumper. You don't have to run me over. Last time I went to Abilene, I almost got hit three times. And it's very hard on the nerves. Driving is so hard on the nerves. And so then I get home and I'm like, so tired. <laughs> driving makes me so tired oh but anyway yeah so I have a lot of doctor stuff coming up I have let's see this Friday on a stitch in crime we are going to be doing I'm going to be talking about the the deaths that are happening around Lady Bird Lake in Austin here in Texas where I am. If you are new, I'm so glad to have you. Thanks for coming in, spending some time with me. And if you've been around for a while, I appreciate you guys so very much. I love y'all. Have fun today. I'll see you later. Serbs is on the horn. <laughs>